Hello everybody, uh, my name is Colin Galler. I work in Fingal County Council and I'm going to give a short presentation on the building regulations part M. There are 12 parts to the building regulations. Um, M is the last one. I always see M as the anti-discrimination part of the billing regulations because it, it comes really from the Equal Status Acts and the Disability Acts to ensure that you know buildings uh, don't buildings and the use of the buildings don't discriminate against people with you know different abilities. The legal requirement um, M one is really the legal requirement. It's Adequate provision shall be made for people to access and use a building, its facilities and its environments. M2 to 4 just emphasise certain parts of uh, this, this regulation. And just to note that it mentions environments. So environments is the bit outside the building. So M also includes the external approaches. Here we have a picture of some tactile paving and pedestrian crossing to allow people to get to the building. Technical guidance part M is broken up into three sections. Uh, the first section is access and use of buildings other than dwellings, which is really new buildings. Second section is access and use of existing buildings other than dwellings. And the third section is access and use of dwellings. And as you know, if you use the technical guidance, it's prima facie evidence of compliance with the building regulations, but there is other documents, technical documents out there, which, which can be used as well. Um, you have BS 8300 uh, 2018, which is the code of practice for design of accessible and inclusive built environments. Uh, you also have uh, the universal design suite of documents. Uh, they're called building for everyone. Section ones and two, um, buildings other than dwellings. I've just pulled out a few points here. Um, so obviously, like I said, people can access, circulate uh, within the building and use the building's facilities. Uh, sanitary facilities, where provided, there should be adequate sanitary facilities available that are accessible to people with a range of abilities. And you know, they, 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 you don't put these uh, accessible facilities way down the back. Really, they should be anti-discriminatory. So they should be beside or near the existing uh, sanitary facilities. Um, where relevant facilities are fixed. So this is basically you know, where you have uh, uh, audience, refreshments, sleeping accommodation. There should be adequate provision made for people with arranged abilities. Suitable ACE communication. So it should be looped. The building should be looped. Um, you should have, you know, good contrast to allow people with, you know, uh, vision issues uh, or mobility issues. Um, color and contrast is an interesting one. You have your light reflectant value, so where zero is is black and a hundred is white. You, you should have good uh, color contrast so that people can see steps, so people can see, you know, the doors and 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 see where to go. Wayfinding, very important as well. It should be easy for people to get around the building, not just people with range abilities, but everybody. Uh, signage, lighting lux, you know, it comes up quite a bit in, in part B as well, where, you know, you have to be able to get out of the building in an emergency. But there is, there's numbers given, you know, there's 20 lux on level approach, 100 lux on ramps, 100 lux on circulation corridors. It, there is figures given there and the building has to comply to this. Section three, dwellings. Um, it's quite a short section. Uh, and basically there's only three points in it. Uh, people can safely and conveniently approach and gain access. So you, you're basically saying level access, okay? You can get from your car to the building through a level access approach with ramps. Uh, people uh, have access to the main uh, main living room basically so at entry level so you can get to the the main habitable room at entry level which is generally the the living room uh, and a wc is provided at entry level okay and i have down here my face i think is in the way of it a bit uh your, your option b there's option a and option b basically we're looking for 1200 
by 7.50 left for a wheelchair to be able to fit in that area. So you can move from the wheelchair to use the facilities in the, in the, the actual bathroom. OK, just a couple of notes. 15 mil is the maximum threshold on the, the front door. The front door should be 800 mil wide to allow you know people get in and out of the building quite easily. DACs, uh, Disability Access Certs, um, all, all building control authorities are very well aware of this. Um, there was a big change in 2018. Well, there was a change in 2018. From, from the list here and from the list here, uh, uh, buildings containing a flat was removed. Okay, and and that and from my understanding is that really relates to bringing back homes. But it does mean that a material alteration of a building containing a flat no longer needs a DAC. Okay, uh, and similar with 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 material change of use. Okay, uh, what do you need with a DAC? Obviously, you need to fill in the, the required statutory form, which would be now the online applications module of the BCMS. Um, you know, you need the set of drawings showing the existing and proposed. You need a compliance report and you need to pay the fee. So it is there's there's quite a bit of information. You're proving that the design complies with part M. Um, and remember, even if you don't need a DAC, every building has to comply with part M, regardless of having a DAC or not having a DAC. Uh, building non-compliances. I just have a, a few examples here, you know. Where, where's the ramp? Um, you know, people with visual impairments, you know, they, sometimes they need to have a Jedi, you know, use of the force to actually know where somebody's visual, like the tapper will, will hit things down low, but there's no way he's gonna miss that. Um, and I, you know, you have to admire the ingenuity here, but it is not a disabled shower. Um, I just threw in these here, and I think my face is in the way of that. Uh, who, who do these, who are who are affected by part M? You know, obviously everyone, every consultant will say wheelchair users, and they all do. But you have to remember the other people that are affected: the parent in the buggy, you know, uh, the person on crutches, the person with hearing impairment, eyesight impairment mental impairment you know that it's easy to understand this building it's easy to get around this building these are the people that are forgotten uh, consultants only ever remember the wheelchair user universal design uh, i i threw this up because uh, there's such uh, similarity between universal design and disability access and I put up basically the core of the disability access here and then the, the definition of universal design, just to show you what the similarities are. And remember now, this is the Disability Act 2005. This is you know nearly 20 years old. And what does it say? It says the design and composition of the environment so that it may be accessed and understood to the greatest possible extent, universal design. Design a composition of the environment, access and understood and used to the greatest extent possible. You know, almost identical language. Uh, okay, that's that's the end of the presentation. Uh, I suppose I had a couple other just minor notes that I wanted to mention. Um, one was uh, uh, non-compliances. Um, uh, we're in Fingal, certainly, we, we still have builders who, who think it's okay to put steps up to a dwelling uh, and fight to nail about it, uh, you know, and uh, the paradigm of the building wrecks is in a long, long time. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it's still happening and we still take a force and action about it, which which is shocking. Like these 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 builders, you know, they're, they're obviously been building the same way for the last 30 years and have never changed. Um, I suppose the other thing I just wanted to mention really briefly is uh, uh, extensions or material operation. Sometimes, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of an argument about what we'll accept and what we'll not accept. And I suppose the golden rule is it, it must not create a new or greater contravention of the building regulations. So that is kind of our golden rule. Um, so whatever work is done cannot create a new or a greater contravention of the building regulations. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody, and I'll talk to you again.